Have you been thinking about starting a podcast? Let me tell you about Anchor. Anchor is totally free and it is very easy. In addition to it being easy, they provide the tools so you don't have to look anywhere else. They also distribute your podcast to several other platforms so you don't have to do any of that work. Additionally, you can make some money while doing your podcast through Anchor. Go ahead and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and start your podcast today. You will enjoy. Hey, hey, Awaken Love Couple. This is your hot and holy love coach, Chara Taylor. And I want to welcome you to another episode of Keeping Your Marriage Hot and Holy. So we're going to stay in the same vein of talking about how we can actually get to hot and holy. So listen, guys, staying in the throes of hot and holy is deeply engulfed in the constant ability to communicate on a level that reaches beyond the heart of a person and touches their innermost being, the soul. It is words and actions that cause our soul to excel and incapacitates the body and tells our body to respond with passion, affection, and desire. You know, this kind of communication bonds people heart, mind, and soul together and then causes a reaction in the body. You've probably heard of this before, but you've probably blown it off and refused to apply it like you've refused to apply other things you've heard that could save your marriage. <laughs> Listen, we're all guilty, okay? Look, 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 look. There are numerous studies to prove this type of uh, effectiveness. There have been books, there have been devotionals, there have been retreats. It's been used in formal marital counseling. Yep, I'm talking about the five love languages. So now before you tune me out or turn it off, hear me out, as I put this in a language that we can understand. Dr. Gary Chapman, who is responsible for the discovery of this marriage and relationship miracle, he did a phenomenal job helping us understand that each of us receive and understand love differently. His work has revealed we enjoy it. We are at our most joyous time when somebody is spending time with us and their undivided attention is solely on us and we're doing things together. Some of us feel loved when someone physically touches us, like hugs us or rubs us or cuddle, etc., some of us feel loved most when someone gives us some fascinating compliments or some verbal praise to those people that says, I love you. Now, some of us feel love when someone does something very nice or very kind for us without us having to say anything to them to get it. That speaks love. And then there's some of us who feel loved most when someone gives us a gift. Those are the five love languages. Gary Chapman calls them quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of serving or service and gifts. But that tells us how we receive love. So one way to determine which of these are your top two or which two of these are your top two is to pay attention to how you express love. Because we typically speak our own language fluently and flawlessly, right? So if English is your natural language, then you have very little difficulty speaking it to others. But if someone speaks a different language to you, then you look at them strange because you don't understand what they're saying. They are not wrong. You just don't understand. And it is the exact same thing that happens with love languages. You speak what you know and what you desire. And then the other person speaks what they know and what they desire. Okay. So but the key is what we have to do is to learn our spouse's love language. We have to listen to them because they tell all when they are complaining. We tell all when we are complaining. You never spend enough time with me. We never do anything together. You never want to hug me or touch me. Why don't you hold my hand? When are we going to cuddle? You never think to just give me a gift. 
You never think to just get me something? We tell all, we tell what we desire. We tell how we want to be loved, which is great. The problem is you have to have some leniency or some grace. Give some grace, understanding that your spouse does not speak your language naturally. So your spouse is going to have to take time to learn a new language. You can help in that process but don't have all of the expectations that they are going to speak this language and speak it fluently and speak it all the time. Because what comes natural is to speak what you naturally speak. Okay, so hopefully that helped you a little bit. Now, I want to tell you that I have two problems with these love languages. I think they're nice. I think they're amazing. It's how we were created. But I have two problems with them when it comes to our relationships. One, I just kind of briefly spoke on it, is that we expect our spouse to know exactly what to do. And they don't. It's foreign to them. The second problem I have is we expect our spouse to fulfill an area that they did not create. So follow me on this. Have you ever considered that God wants to connect with you and speak to you in these very areas? Because he's actually the one who created you and put that language there. So since he is the creator of it, then maybe that's how he wants to communicate and to connect with you. Let's think about the woman at the well. If you know the story in the Bible where Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well and he told her, if you drink of the water that I give, you will never get thirsty again. So he was telling her that if you connect with me on this level, I will keep you fulfilled. The same thing applies to us when it comes to our love language. If you're always asking for quality time from your spouse, then I can bet you that God is seeking to have some quality time with you. If you're always seeking and looking for verbal praise and constant affirmation from person after person, I am willing to bet you that God is trying to let you know who you are in him and to affirm you through and in him. Same thing with physical touch. Many people don't understand that God wants to give us these pressures on our spouse, but I'm willing to bet that God wants to do that. Even when it comes to acts of service, which is one of mine. And I've learned that God wants to do special things for me that nobody else can do. And he has been proving that he has been filling that area. And the same thing with gifts where he wants to endow us with not only natural gifts, but spiritual gifts. And we keep seeking to have our spouses to complete these areas. So if you allow Jesus to speak to you how he created you, then the desire will be fulfilled. That does not mean that our spouse will not speak some of those languages to us, but it will relieve our spouse of that pressure of having to learn this and relearn something that they totally do not know. And it relieves them from all this extra pressure added onto the pressures that we already have in our daily lives. If it's for uh, for the husband, he's already, he already has to, you know, provide, make sure the family is taken care of, compete in jobs and all, and that's the same man and woman. And then to have to come home and have the extra added pressure of now, let me figure out how to daily and constantly communicate in this ability that is going to touch my spouse's soul so that they will express passion and desire. Okay. That's fine for a little bit, but come on now. The reality is you can't keep that game up. But if we allow God to speak to us in that area that he created us, not only will we be fulfilled, but our spouses and ourselves, we will be free to give love and receive love the way that we know how. And it'll be okay. We won't have all these extra expectations. All the extra expectations do is cause extra chaos and confusion and division. So my, my my plea for us is not to forget about our love languages. No, that's how we were created. But seek to allow God to fill those areas that he created in us. And then accept, you know, enjoy it. 
when your spouse does do it, that does not give them a free ring or free course to not speak the language. Yes, they should be trying to fulfill us. We should be trying to fulfill one another, but we can avoid a lot of chaos and we can get to hot and holy if we will allow God to speak to us in the way that he created us. Now I'm going to get back to these love languages because when we are trying to speak our spouse's love language, it is very important that you learn your spouse's love language. It is very important. You learn some of the ways that make them happy. For instance, when it comes to gifts, there's certain people who only feel love when they get a gift. I am not a good gift giver. So you're going to have to tell me what kind of gifts you want. So if you, if your spouse likes to get gifts, then you need to ask. Pay attention to the things that they say when they are talking in just regular conversation. Oh, I would love to have this. I would love to have that. And you have to communicate with your spouse. I've had to ask my husband, can you please come up with a gift that is tangible that I can afford and that's something I can do? Because my husband, his idea of gifts is what only things that God can do. And I'm like, can you bring it back down to earth, sir? Please, I need you to bring that back to earth so that give me a gift that I can give. If it's cuddle and your spouse doesn't like to cuddle or like to touch, then find out what is going on. It could be that your spouse was sexually abused and has st still has an issue in that area and it hasn't been healed. Do you follow me? So instead of allowing the gifts to tear us apart, we got to figure out how to allow these love languages to bring us together instead of tear us apart. Communicate, talk, learn, explore. And if you're just being selfish and you're just going to refuse to not speak your spouse's love language, then you have an issue and you need to seek some help because that is not God's desire. His desire is that we would be pleasing to one another and that we would go above and beyond the duty and the and make the sacrifice to find out what it takes to make our spouses happy. Ultimately, you're going to be constantly filled through your love language if you are filled through God. But you can enjoy time on the earth with your spouse if you learn spouse's language, hear what they're complaining about, ask how you can be better in that area and then figure out how to do it. It's just that simple. You can have hot and holy by speaking your spouse's love language. You can have hot and holy through love languages by allowing God to speak yours. Then that way the pressures are off of you and off of your spouse. Okay, guys, that's all I have for us today. And as always, thanks for joining. Tune in with me. Follow me on social media. Join me and send me an email. I absolutely love your feedback. Okay, I appreciate all of your feedback and your support. Until the next time, keep your marriage hot and holy.